episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody who watched the uh, previous episode of the show, uh, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Um, yes, there's a, a few comments I haven't caught up with as yet, but I will do as soon as possible. Um, so, last episode of the show seemed to go down quite well, uh, which is good. <laughs> nice email from Sarah at uh, Remy Contro saying uh, thank you very much for that. Didn't hear anything from... Um, uh, domain notes class but uh, I suppose when you don't hear anything you have to assume that they're quite happy because if they weren't they'd have told you about it I imagine anyway um, that was uh, a couple of weeks ago um, so to this week um, now you know I like tasting whiskey I mean <laughs> does the Pope you know what in the woods as they say um, I could taste it till it comes out of my ears um, I mean a few years back when I was uh, when I was working for the or doing tastings for the whiskey magazine uh, one of the um, uh, one of the sort of the journalists that, that wrote for the magazine referred to me as the whiskey stig um, it was a case of you know if you wanted a tasting note just you know, ping me a, a sample and I would do it and on numerous occasions did that for the whiskey magazine um, I'd get a sort of an email saying you know we've got this particular whiskey and the, the, the tasting note we've got isn't very good can you do a tasting note for it they'd ping me in a sample I'd do a tasting note and it would all you know sometimes I'd get the um, uh, yeah, it would be sort of labelled with my name sometimes not but anyway I, I digress on that um what I'm basically trying to say is that sometimes there is a bit of a oh you know there's a bit of a seen it all before kind of feeling yeah so here we go again another sort of load of um samey uh, releases that kind of thing um I mean I don't mean that in a negative way but sometimes you know it, it, there's, there's a bit of a lack of real excitement um Although in saying that, you know, it does happen from time to time. I mean, take for example, sort of last Friday, uh, I was at a tasting um, that was uh, being um, uh, put on by a chap called uh, Jordan Lunn, who was the owner and distiller of the West Midlands distillery. And it's, it's lovely to sort of, you know, hear a, a sort of distiller you know, explain their approach to distilling and, you know, what they're trying to achieve. And, and he was doing some really intriguing stuff, you know, playing around with different strains of yeast, different types of yeast, um, even going as far as, as tailoring the new make with different types of yeast to what he perceived to be the sort of like the characteristics of the individual casks that are going to be aged in. I mean, yeah, who does that stuff? I mean, this is kind of nerdy stuff to the nth degree, really. Um, I mean, that, maybe I'll get some samples out of him, you know, and we'll do an episode of the show. But at the moment, their, their stuff is fairly young. Um, and it, I, I found it quite exciting. I thought it was really intriguing, you know, something a little bit different. Um, and that kind of leads into today's episode of the show. Um, as you can see from the title page, I'm looking at an independent American bottler and blender called Barrel Craft Spirits. Now, um, I kind of vaguely knew of them um, in passing. Um, the, the, the firm was set up in 2013 by a chap called uh, Joe Beatrice in Louisville and um, uh, came to prominence in 2017 when they won Best Bourbon uh, at that year's uh, San Francisco Spirits uh, Awards. And um, since then, they have been building on this and doing some really intriguing and interesting stuff. They don't own a distillery. They are purely uh, an independent uh, bottling company. They buy and they blend. And the blending is, is what they're kind of renowned for. Um, and uh, as part of their sort of expansion, uh, they've obviously attempted, uh, they're now looking at moving into the UK market. Uh, the um, stuff is being imported by a company called Axiom Brands. So a big thank you to uh, um, Owen at uh, Axiom for the samples for today's episode of the show. And um, yeah, so it's coinciding with an expansion of their, uh, their blending and bottling facilities. They're apparently uh, moving into a 31,000 square foot facility in Louisville, which uh, will contain eight blending tanks with a capacity of 64,000 gallons um, and apparently it will increase their capacity by 500% I mean you know that's that's growing quickly I mean one hopes they don't go and do uh, a bloody brew dog um, at the end of the day but obviously I 
don't know that much about the sort of company. I don't know whether they they've kind of like put themselves out as small and fluffy and uh, you know uh, that kind of thing like Brewdog used to be, or well maybe not quite the fluffy bit, but anyway. Um, and uh, so yes, basically. Um, I, I was really excited to find that uh, uh, I was getting hold of some samples of their stuff because, like I said, you know, they have won numerous awards since 2017 and, and seem to be sort of, um, you know, really sort of sought after, certainly in the States anyway. And so it's, it's interesting to see that uh, they're now going to be over here in the UK. So anyway, I was kindly sent um, eight samples from their their core range for want of a better word and I've obviously selected six that I'm going to look at today so they're all at natural car strength obviously um, so I'm not going to sort of like waffle too much and we'll just bash on with uh, what I'm going to do. Right, okay, so uh, we're going to kick off with a bottling they've called the Seagrass Rye. Now, uh, um, the, the, this is bottled at 60.19% because they're all bottled in uh, in the proof. Uh, I didn't actually sort of make a note of uh, what proof it is, but 60.19, yeah. You can just roughly double the ABV to get the proof if you like. Um, so the Seagrass Rye is a blend of American and Canadian rye. Um, each finished separately in ex martinique rum casks, Madeira casks and apricot brandy casks before being then blended all back in together and this is the bit that I love you know I love blending I mean it you can create your recipe and you you can get the balance absolutely spot on um, whereas obviously using finishing casks is less should we say scientific in inverted commas. So anyway, so uh, we're going to kick off with the seagrass rye. Next bottling we'll be looking at is called the Dovetail. Uh, this is bottled at 61.27% and it's a blend of American whiskies uh, which has been finished in black strap rum casks, uh, late bottled port pipes and Dunn Vineyards Cabernet Sauvignon casks. Wow, I mean, you know, who does this stuff? You know, well, ob obviously they do. <laughs> I mean, stupid thing to say. Um, so, yeah, bizarre combination of cars. As we said, it could be another one of those kind of, mm, on paper, that looks like it could be a complete and utter disaster. But when you stick it in, <laughs> in a glass, it well, well, we'll find out what uh, what it's like, won't we? Um, bottling number three is called Vant Vantage or Vantage. Um, I don't know how they pronounce it in um, Louisville. Um, so 57.22%. It's a blend of straight bourbons from Indiana, Tennessee, Kentucky, um, finished in three distinct expressions of virgin oak, Mizunara, French and toasted American oak. Uh, each component is finished separately and then obviously again blended all together. I mean, you know, uh, I think sort of my, by the time I kind of like read through all of this stuff, my mind was going, oh my god, I've got to taste these. Um, and <laughs> I have them, which is very, very cool. Um, Right, moving on to the fourth bottling of the day. This is the uh, small batch rye. Uh, this is batch number four bot and bottled at 57.85. It's a blend of straight rye whiskies, uh, five, six and ten years old from Indiana, uh, five year old from Tennessee, six year old from Kentucky and 14 year old uh, Canadian. I love how they're using both American and Canadian um, rice. I mean, obviously, they have completely different characters to each other, and I'm really looking forward to seeing whether we can pick out the sort of that 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 change in character, whether that uh, is added uh, to the complexity. Um, so the overall mash bill for this particular rye is 89% rye, 7% corn, and 4% malted barley. So really, really looking forward to that. Um, and then finally, uh, or not finally, but uh, penultimately, uh, a couple of really, really intriguing bottlings. Um, this is uh, the um, uh, Bourbon Cask Finished Series. Uh, the first one uh, being uh, Ambruana Finish, bottled at 58.21%. Now, Ambruana apparently is a uh, variety of oak uh, grown in Brazil and um, has been used for years uh, in Brazilian spirits, apparently, not that I'm particularly sort of well-versed in Brazilian spirits, has to be said, but apparently came to, uh, 
came to sort of like notice it in the USA when uh, an Ambruana finished stout uh, reaped first place in the Great American Beer Festival of 2018 and then suddenly everybody went nuts for it. It's a bit like um, Andean Oak, <laughs> you know, it seems like, so I don't know quite how where that all came from, but suddenly, you know, Andean Oak, everybody's suddenly using it and I imagine that sort of, you know, you'll start to see an inordinate amount of different spirits that have been aged in uh, ex Amberana casks. So anyway, so this is a, uh, a blend of straight bourbon uh, whiskey uh, of two different mash bills uh, with aged in uh, different char levels of Amberana casks uh, and then they have used an additional vatting of non-finished whiskey to sort of obviously bounce up. Now Ambrana apparently is uh, renowned for having a, um, uh, a waxy nature and uh, it has a very sort of a, a tight interlocking um, uh, grain and it's very, very, very spicy. You get lots of apparently cinnamon, clove, uh, nutmeg, etc., etc., from that. So I imagine that that basically they've vatted in the, the unaged or the unfinished spirit to to basically make sure that the Ambrana just doesn't completely overpower everything. So it's a blend of Indiana five, six, seven, and ten-year-old whiskey uh, with five-year-old Kentucky whiskey, and the uh, mash bill comes out at seventy-five percent corn, twenty-one percent rye, and four percent malted barley final bottling of the day is called um, in the cask finish here it's called a tale of two cities now uh, or no sorry tale of two islands sorry tale of two cities was uh, um, the, the book wasn't it um, so yes bottled at 54.11 now the story to this was back in 2018 they produced a limited edition tale of two islands rum it was a Jamaican rum that had been uh, finished or uh, matured in ex isla peated casks interesting so basically uh, they then uh, took these casks and <laughs> used it to finish their their blended whiskies in um, so basically they took uh, again uh, a blend of straight um, uh, straight bourbons uh, from Indiana five six and nine years old uh, along with some five and six year old from Maryland and uh, blended them together and uh, the derived mash bill for that comes out 73% corn, 23% rye and 4% malted barley. Now um, if you want to go and have a look at their website loads and loads of information not a great deal of information about the actual history of the company and all that kind of stuff but loads of information about their, uh, their, 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 their bottlings and this is just their core range they do two other ranges that are even more bloody expensive and this lot aren't exactly cheap either I mean all this th these are all going to be well over 90 quid a bottle um, and then they do a I think a, a gold range and a silver range or something like that and they're, they're, they're phew, eye wateringly expensive it has to be said so um, they're not cheap and let's hope they're damn good so uh, let's kick off with a bit of uh, oh god what am I starting with oh yes the seagrass rye <laughs> Okay, so let's kick off with the seagrass rye. Let's see what the nose gives us on this thing. Oh, mother, that's good. Um, right, well, I'm getting the apricots and the, the, the juicy fruits off the top. It's got a kind of almost like thick cut sort of um, apricot marmalade character. Um, it's vanilla, melon, little, almost a little bit of a plumminess as well. Some lovely crisp um, but peppery American rye. There's the column still rye coming through. It's You can really pick up the fact that um, this is not wholly American rye. It has that sort of lighter column still dried Canadian fruit character um, along with the slight pepperiness of the American rye. Then you're getting the cast notes. Um, a little bit of burnt wood. The Madeira comes through with a little bit of sort of um, biscuitiness. Um, there's some wood smoke. Unbelievable. I mean, it is stunning. I mean, you know, like I said, sometimes you kind of get the feeling that you're going through the motions of sin at all, um, and then something comes along like this that just goes, wow, you know. Um, see the pass on.
Mmm. Mmm. That's bloody good. Um, so it kind of, again, it opens up with a macerated apricot, the sort of, the sort of almost marmalade kind of notes. You get the toasty oak, um, biscuity notes, um, a little bit of pepper. The, the Canadian rye kind of comes through on the mid palate um, with that lovely kind of dried fruit. Um, it's a little bit drying on the finish, so the alcohol is obviously sort of masking it slightly, but the spices are kind of coming back. Um, there's a little bit of melon, a little bit of charred pineapple, um, herbal rye, spicy peppery rye. I mean, stunning, absolutely stunning. I mean, you know, <laughs> I've only tasted one of their whiskies, and you can see why these guys have won no end of awards. I mean, it's just stunning. Um, right, so the water has brought out a little bit more of the Madeira casting and a bit more of that biscuitiness. Um, still quite dense, a little less complex, I would guess. Um, there's a little bit more sort of wood notes coming through, a little bit more vanilla, less of the um, the rye. I can still get that little nip from the Canadian rye. Um, yeah, it's still really good, personally, but I think I prefer the nose um, without uh, without dilution. A little bit more cask on the palate again, um, softer, less spicy, less intense, a little fuller, um, more vanilla, certainly getting a little bit more corn, um, it's got that sort of slight fatness of corn, but it's got minerality as well, which is kind of like sort of a, a, that minerality intermingling with a little bit of citrus is kind of just stopping it be, being overly sweet, touch more burnt wood on the finish, I mean, frankly stunning, personally prefer that, that neat. Um, and it doesn't really need water if you don't mind a little masking on the finish. Um, wow, what a star. Okay, so let's move on to the dovetail. I think that uh, the whole idea of why they called it dovetail was they were going up waffling on about sort of like, you know, uh, joinery and how dovetail joints you know, sort of interlock quite nicely and I think they're trying to make the point of interlocking the um, uh, the rum and the port and the uh, um, the wine cast. So let's see what the nose gives us on this end. Oh, that's a bit unusual. Um, quite meaty, um, meaty, barbecuey, sort of leathery. I get walnut, dry biscuits, a little tar, toffee, molasses, touch of spicy red fruit. Um, but there is definitely some, you know, some bourbon character there. There's a little bit of sort of dried bourbony fruit, a little bit of corn, not a huge amount of rye. I'm getting a, a smidge, um, a little bit herbaceous. I guess the rye is a little bit more herbal in character as opposed to um, being uh, sort of outrightly spicy. Mm. But that is very unusual, very unusual, really intriguing. Again, beautifully balanced. Um, I'm getting all the individual cast notes. I'm also getting some spirit character. Um, what more do you want? I mean, that is just supremely blended. Sort of pass on. So it kind of kicks off with this kind of orchard fruit, berries, chocolate coated berries, um, dried apple, vanilla, big juicy corn, um, peppery rye, a little bit of sort of red fruits kind of coming back on the finish, but mainly is that real peppery, intense, spicy rye on the finish. Um, oh, it's tongue tingling. That kind of chocolatey note kind of lingers throughout and it's just stunning. I mean, it really is absolutely amazing. I, again, the balance is just absolutely spot on. It kind of kicks off with a lot of the sort of like the, the cast notes um, and they sort of slowly fade as, as the bourbon or oh, the American whiskey and the, 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 the bourbon, the rye notes start to come through, lead through onto the finish. I mean, wow, absolutely amazing. 
Again, it's a little bit more oak centric uh, once you put a little drop of water with it. I mean, this does seem to be, I mean, admittedly I've only tasted two so far, but this does seem to be a little bit of a theme that when you stick a little bit of water with it, um, you do start to sort of emphasize the sort of like the more creamy oak. It's got almost kind of tropical kind of um, feel to the nose now. Um, I'm guessing sort of that's more of that kind of rum cask note coming through. A little bit of hazelnut as well. Let's see what that's like. Again, more emphasis on the casks. Um, a little bit more of the sort of rummy molasses kind of note, dark chocolate. Um, not getting quite so much spirit character. There's there is some whininess there still, and the whiny notes have gone slightly astringent. Um, again, amazing balance. Really, very, very impressive. And again, personally, I just prefer that undiluted. Right. Okay. So let's move on to number three. This is the Vantage. So this is. Uh, um, straight bourbons uh, finished in the three different types of virgin oak, Mizanara, French and toasted American. Let's see what the nose gives us in this. Well, would you be surprised if I said it's quite oaky? Um, There's a lot of oak. It's coconut, white chocolate, sappy, oily Mizanara, a um, little bit of burnt toasted wood. Tight tannins, spice, wood spice, nutmeg, um, cinnamon. Right, yes, we are up front and centre Oak, Oaksville, but again, there is some bourbony notes that I can get some lovely kind of um, slightly fat corn notes, um, some plum, apricot, grainy spice, it's got a, an edge to it. Wow. Wow. I mean, again, it's just, you just keep putting your nose in the glass and it's just one of those spirits where you just keep picking up new nuances, new notes. Um, yes, lots of oak, but again, just let it rest in the glass. The oak sort of settles down. The uh, spirit character starts to come through. Um, and then if you want to get go back to the oak, just give it a bit of aeration and voila <laughs> more back comes the oak i mean wow i mean this is just the sort of thing you just have to put your nose in you just have to appreciate the the quality that has gone into this not only the quality of the ingredients and quality of the blending i mean i'm sure that's right Again, like the palate, like the palate, like the nose, I should say, um, very oaky, but you can just taste all those different types of oak. You get the sappy Mizunari, you get the vanilla, um, you get the grippy French oak, the sort of quite tannic, tight spices. Um, but underpinning all of that is this lovely kind of plump and juicy corn fat bourbon, a bit of dried fruit, bit of dried apple, baked apple. Um, the finish is kind of more trad, if you like. Um, so it's a bit like the nose. You, it's up front all about the oak. Um, and then the sort of like the spirit kind of comes through towards the end as that sort of oak kind of like just starts to dissipate out. And, you know, it's just stunning. I mean, the length, the finish, unbelievable. Um, yes, it's, it's bloody expensive. You know, and all I can say is that if this is the quality of their entry level stuff, they're top stuff is going to just blow your mind it really is um i would love to have tasted that but obviously <laughs> yeah there ain't any samples of that going around but anyway i'm more than happy slumming it with this right okay so on to the small batch rye so uh blend of uh, just a blend of rye and obviously all aged in virgin american oak so uh, this should be should be more trad as they say Yeah, it's got a succulence. It's got an almost kind of sweetness to the rye. Um, really fruity. I mean, you know, it's. I don't often associate 
fruitiness with rye. I mean, you know, rye is more about the sort of the spice and the herbalness. Um, you just really just don't associate fruit and richness with rye. It's that's what the corn component is there for uh, at the end of the day. It's got some sort of earth, leather, tobacco, violet, almond paste, mint, vanilla oil. I mean, that's stunning. I mean, you know, you like your rye. I mean, you know, I often go on about Rittenhouse being the benchmark rye. And, you know, I think for its money, I, think I would still say that Rittenhouse is indeed the benchmark. But, wow, wow, this is a stunning rye. This is kind of rye taken to another level. It's just got so much complexity and so many things, aromas that I would not have kind of... Um, ever put with a rye whiskey it's just stunning that's what the palette's like mm. wow I mean the complexity of that is just off the scale I mean it it has that lovely traditional sort of you know spicy um, dark peppery rye a little bit of truffle oil molasses tobacco there's a, a bit of, of um, earth but it's again it's got this richness this fruit this kind of you know uh, autumnal almost appley fruit um, coffee spice leather more tobacco earth oh but again, it's just it's just so complex, so multi-dimensional. Um, it doesn't. I mean, I love the tingling spices on the finish. I don't think it really needs any uh, any water, but we will put a little drop of water just to see what happens to it. Um, mm. Now, I must admit, I was kind of expecting oak. Um, but no, and here, here is the thing, you should never always expect the unexpected, as I say. Um, we've got a lot more herbal, more menthol, eucalyptus, more black pepper, less oak in actual fact. Um, it's leaner, it's fresher, it's crisper. There's a lovely oiliness there as well, but I mean, I just keep going on. Let's see what that was like. A little bit more oak on the palate, a little bit more vanillins, but again, you're not keeping that spicy rye down. I mean, that's got lovely black pepper, um, dark chocolate, tobacco, leather again. I mean, it is just... Mm. Wow. You know, if you've never had a great rye, that's a great rye. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Ambruana cask finish. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Right, well, it's spicy, all right. I mean, it's kind of cinnamon, nutmeg, clove. Um, quite tropical. Um, baked banana, um, marzipan, almond oil, violets. Some sweet rye. Um, sweet corn as well um slight savoriness there's an almost kind of pastry kind of character happening um that's different that is unusual that is um got a sweetness there as well i mean it's kind of like um i don't know what it's like to be bluntly honest with you it, it's just it's just nothing, like nothing i've ever had before um i mean yes it's american you can smell that it's got the richness it's got the the corn um but it's just got so much kind of spice and it's sweet spice and it's maybe it's getting a little sweet too sweet now a little bit coconutty um wow i mean I, you can understand why people love this i mean it's just it's a crowd pleasing nose um mm, sort of pass on
that's for those who love it a little bit sweet but again the balance the, the minerality the citric notes there just balance up all that sort of sweet tropical savory pastry kind of character um again it kicks off with a load of spice cinnamon nutmeg um pumpkin pumpkin i get pump i mean where the hell does that come from i mean yeah it's fleshy it's fruity it's got that lovely corn sweetness and sometimes when a whiskey is overly corn fat and it gets really kind of overly sweet and really fat and sort of you know slightly convected no not here marzipan oil almond almond paste um little bittering on the finish some vanilla i mean the bittering just kind of like oh that's just balancing up all that sweetness this is stunning absolutely stunning um it, again that the balance is just Mm, it's just stunning. I mean, yeah, how many more times are I going to say stunning like that all of this? Um, and, and, and do you know what? I've tasted these before doing this, you know. Um, I mean, I, I, like I said, you know, it's kind of every now and again something comes along that just... And, and you know, it sounds a bit arsy, but redefines the category, if you like. This re is really redefining American whiskey for me. Um, and, yeah, that sounds a bit arsy and a bit, you know, kind of highfalutin and all that kind of stuff and let's marketing monkey jargon but you know a bit more oilier on the nose um let's get back to the whiskey shall we um it's almost a kind of barley note it's almost whiskey like but fat whiskey big whiskey um you know fat scotsman um mm, honeycombs but it's, again it's got that that minerality that balances that minerality and that slight citric note let's see what that's like soft fleshy quite resiny um yeah waxy resiny very oaky cinnamon on the note on the finish um Again, I think I personally prefer it neat. I think it's got more vibrancy, more intensity when it's neat. Again, it kind of emphasises the oak. And that, apart from the, the, the rye, um, that does seem to be kind of like the theme here. That when you start to dilute the, um, the spirit, it does seem to sort of emphasise the oak. And, you know, it does that. Now, I've tasted numerous whiskies where it does that. And numerous whiskies where it does exactly the opposite. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's nice that there is kind of quite a... Um, consistency here so you know if you want to taste the the outright complexity and don't mind a little bit of alcohol a little bit of intensity then then do so without adding a, any water if you prefer you, a little bit softer but you know a little bit more oakier then obviously you add a little bit of water so yeah wow. Right, okay, so on to the final what bottling of the afternoon. This is a tale of two islands. So uh, this is a selection of American whiskies that have been finished in the um, Tale of Two Islands cast, which was basically Exiler cast that had been finished, built, filled with uh, Jamaican rum. It's actually quite a trad nose. Um, oily, waxy, um distinctly American there's a little bit of peat smoke there's a little bit of astringency it's a sort of herbal -y rum cask note it kind of I'm more in the sort of worthy park Jamaican rum um, might possibly be Hampton possibly but we're in that end as opposed to sort of being in the um, other other end the uh, um, oh, what the hell's the name of the distillery suddenly just completely eluded me um, but yeah we're kind of more in that sort of herbally kind of funky end of the Jamaican spectrum um, grilled pineapple corn peach sweet rye green banana loam I mean complexity here again is off the charts um it is just it's just so unique I, I have never come across anything quite like it i mean you know that's twice in one tasting that's pretty damn good um let's see what the palette's like A 
again, kind of kicks off quite trad. Um, so a quite rye heavy, um, sort of dark spices, uh, macerated fruit, um, dark chocolate, sweet corn, and bang, in comes this smoke and this kind of astringent sort of herbal rummy notes on, on the mid palate, green fruit, citrus peel, and just kind of lingers throughout and it kind of like, you know, it's like I say, it kind of starts off traditional, in comes the oak and that kind of like just kind of fades quite quite nicely. There's a little bit of almost kind of pastry kind of note on the finish, black peppercorn, a little bit more rye. I mean, yeah, I'm running out of superlatives for their stuff, it has to be said. Um, this has just been great. Let's see what the, the, the nose is like. A little bit fresher, a little bit more citric. I'm getting kind of like pink grapefruit. Pink grapefruit. I've never had pink grapefruit in American whiskey in my entire life. Um, touch of pineapple. It's a little bit more, again, a little bit more cask oriented, a little bit more rummy. Um, peat is not quite so intense, it's more stringent. Some lovely rye spices. Mm, let's see what pass up. Again, a little bit more of the rummy notes on the palate, a little bit more fresh citric notes. Um, although in saying that, the, the, the American whiskey kind of character really does come through on the finish. I mean, just stunning, absolutely stunning. It has to be. Right, okay, I, I know I've waffled an inordinate man throughout all of this and just gone, wow, God, that's amazing, far too many times. That's some of today's episode of the show. Firstly, big, big thank you to Owen at um, uh, Action Brands for the sample for today's episode of the show. And what a show. I mean, the, um, the seagrass rye, a gorgeous rye. I mean, you know, you pick up all the elements, the American, the Canadian. I get the sort of like the rum notes, the Madeira notes, the apricot notes. I mean, just... Just, just a beautiful whiskey, and I mean, you know, let's just take that as I said, you know, like I said, everything I've tasted this afternoon has been supremely balanced. Um, the dovetail is just really well named. Uh, again, you get all of the elements of the different cast types along with the spirit notes, and you know, what, what more can you say? I mean, it's just frankly a stunning, a stunning whiskey. Um, the Vantage, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, again, pretty much can say exactly the same thing about uh, about the Vantage as everything else. Um, the small batch rye, very very trad, um, and you know, just just a great rye. You know, lovely blend of rye, um, and it just again shows the sort of the quality of what they're doing. Um, I am rushing because I'm running out of time. The, the battery's about to die. Um, the Amberana cast finish and the other, uh, the, the Tale of Two Islands. Again, just wonderfully balanced whiskies. Just really unique. You're never going to taste anything quite like it. And I, you know, I know these are not cheap. These are 90 odd quid a bottle. And you're probably going to have to basically pick your poison, so to speak. But pick your poison, buy one of them. Um, and pfft, I will be getting some stock in in due course it has to be said so buy them from you know who um please um and, but if you don't just if they're available in your locale just just buy one i mean you, you don't know what you're missing so anyway um with that in mind that's this week's episode of the show sorry i'm kind of like rushing this ending but um all i can say is until next week uh good ramming Through the rain.